Americans think it's, it's going to cause an epidemic. It's going to be a bad thing. And uh, he said, they, the, the desire is that you keep this quiet. You can have the information, but that you let this play out. I said, well, let's get something straight if I let it play out. I said, I want to know that you will immediately treat the blood starting tomorrow that the blood will be treated to screen for any AIDS virus. And um, I wanted something else, I forget now. Uh, well, how they probably responded to that. How did they yeah. respond when you, when you made that demand? Well, he, 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 he assured me on my demands, he assured me that they would do it. And he said, I think he probably was in favor of doing it and couldn't get it done. But he said, it, it will be done. And, uh, and it was done. And it was done, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And, but it was, there was so much tainted blood around, you can't believe it. I mean, Charlie, this, was, this is just an incredible story. And uh, we're gonna relax a little bit. And because there's just, this, it's such a saga with so many twists and turns. And uh, I appreciate you having the courage to come here today and share that story with so many people who may not be familiar with who Ryan White was. Yeah, probably. And maybe they'll Does get it. on the internet and learn. Yeah. Um, because he became quite the poster child for everyone across America afflicted with, with AIDS. When we come back, I want to relax a little bit. Okay. Now we're going to talk about something that you really love, and that's <laughs> the Western horse riding industry of reining. Yeah. And okay. uh, we'll get to that okay. right after this. Great. I've always liked Indianapolis. Um, I've been interested in the bigger city life. The community and everything fell into place. With my degree, I plan on becoming a pediatric nurse. Indianapolis has several hospitals and different options to choose from as to where I should go. I chose Indianapolis because I love the Pacers, I love the Colts, and this is a basketball city. Just wanted to stay in the city, play in front of my friends and family, and try to give Marion my best. Boqua is athletics, aquatics, and exercise put together in a fun, effective package that allows you to get in great shape safely, effectively with a bunch of friends. It is a low impact exercise. It's not hard on your joints. It helps me with my balance. It helps me keep my muscles flexible. If I could do it five nights a week, I probably would. Thomas Phoenix Lawn and Garden is your local Husqvarna dealer. With us, you'll find a knowledgeable staff that's able to provide quick turnaround service so your business doesn't have to stop. From zero-turn mowers to trimmers and chainsaws, Husqvarna has you covered. And with the fleet program, the more you buy, the more you get in return. With that kind of stability, you can rely on us for the long haul. Get your Husqvarna equipment today at Thomas Phoenix Lawn and Garden, located at 6292 West County Road Zero in Frankfort. Tired of watching the same old things on TV? Something new is on the horizon. The ISC Sports Network. Contact your cable provider today to add the ISC Sports Network. See the big games, the big moments, the championships, and more from all across the state. High schools, colleges, original content you can't find anywhere else. On the ISC Sports Network, it's all here. Find out more information at iscsportsnetwork.com. Defining Looks is a full-service wig and hair salon. We offer shampoo, cut, color, and styling for wigs and hair. Whether your situation is medical or cosmetic, our goal is to help you every step of the way in this emotional process. Let Defining Looks help you create your signature look. Schedule a consultation at defininglooks.com. Defining Looks, located on Sagamore Parkway North, next to Home Depot. Mom, we're late, and I left my soccer bag.
bag of Cindy's and I need to get my dress today. It's okay, honey. I'll take care of it. Oh, Mom, I'll take care of it. Uh... We'll take care of it. With more ways to access Indiana's most highly skilled primary care doctors. Stop! Indiana University Health makes it easy to take care of your family. What? I told you I'd take care of it. Schedule same day primary care appointments at 1 888 IU Health. Marion University wants to challenge you. Is your mind filled but open, curious, and creative? Can it answer the question what are you made of? Arthur will line it up with a right-footed side wander with a half a minute remaining in overtime, a header, a shot, and a goal! Oh my goodness, a, a buzzer beater! to Bailey on the cross on the plate at number seven, Robbie Capehart. 28 seconds remaining in the second overtime. And the Maroon and goal take a 1-0 lead. What a shot! Unbelievable play. Just a slip head to the far post, just caught Allen off guard. Comes to the near post, and you know, we're talking about a buzzer beater here. Just comes in, this near post, absolutely unbelievable. Just, just couldn't quite, the designs so just couldn't quite get the mark on it. Fantastic finish. Fourth Fantastic goal finish. The season beats the K-Pod defender, coach. beats the defender near post, gets to the ball first, one touch, and that is going to be the ball game. We are down now. Unbelievable. Down. Hello, boy. This guy, you can, you can trim his ears, and he doesn't do anything. He's just the best, nicest horse to be around. As you can tell, I really like this horse. I've had over a hundred horses that I either raised or bought through the years. Oh, boy. We'll go out. Get over here. This is just warming them up. We're just open easy. I'll do a large, see, if I talk, I can't talk if I'm loping. He hears my voice, he's going to the ground. But I thought maybe he wouldn't. But see, I could, I'd do a fast circle and then I want to do slow, and all I do is go, hmm, and he just drops down. But when I went to talk, that ended that. <laughs> but, uh, so sometimes I can't talk to do the maneuvers. Not well, all the time. All the maneuvers call for spins, to, four spins to the left or four spins to the right. Uh, it's somewhere in a pattern. There's 12 patterns, but. Oh, now he's got to stand, I got to stop square. If I'm over there and he's not straight, if you shoulder width off, you lose a point. Oh, then they got to stand. If they're dancing, uh, you're going to lose a point. You got to just stand. Now, a departure, I'll do a, I'll do a left departure. Uh, you can't trot in, you can walk into it, but you cannot, you cannot trot. Oh. Now I did a, called a lead change. I, I did a, from a left to a right lead change there at the center of the circle. And when I want to stop him, 
I didn't, I didn't take hold of him, didn't even touch him. Now, we're gonna, we're gonna warm him up a minute, remind him on a stop. Oh, back up, boy. Back, back. Oh. That a boy. See, his foot dug in deep there. It's bad dirt. Okay, now spin around for him. Oh, I may do four or five or whatever when I practice. Oh, now he'll back up, watch him drop his head. Back, back. That'll score your points anywhere. Now you stay right there, you'll have some fun. Oh. That's kind of the basics. You gotta do spins, lead changes, fast, slow circles, all on one hand, and uh, loose rein. We got really bad dirt here today, but on good dirt, he really slides pretty, but no horse can slide pretty. My other horses won't even stop in this dirt. So, isn't he nice? Go on up there and say hello. See that big eye? Isn't he a friendly guy? Yeah. <laughs> Tell me about raining. Well, I got into raining because <clears throat> I first started in Arabs. And uh, I, I liked that. It was doing well, but you, you can't make a living in Arab raining. Uh, not that you make a living anyhow, but just it, it, there wasn't any since to go to trouble to go to a horse show where they're going to give you a trophy. Uh, I, I outgrew that a long time ago. <laughs> and uh, so uh, the, after I got out of that, uh, I, I won the reserve national championship and my horses won um, the United States and uh, Canada. So we, were the, we won the biggest thing there was, I already won them. Now, did, one, you ha did you have riders riding the horses, or I, was this I you won, competing? I won the reserve uh, championship I rode, and uh, Randy Fowler, um, Patty Shue rode one, uh, caught Ray Raff uh, to the national championship, and uh, Randy Fowler won, won the Canadian national championship. He was, he's a local trainer, still at, in Lebanon, Indiana. and. Uh, then uh, I thought, well, I think I'll get in the quarter horse where they better. So I bought one from somebody who <laughs> tried to learn how to rein. <laughs> and then I had, What intrigued uh, you about it? Well, I liked the fact that the horses were so well trained and, and they could do so many things. Uh, and it, was, uh, it wasn't just go around the circle. You had to do things precisely at the precise time and, it, and you had to do it with one hand, and it just, uh, none of the Arabians, it just, it just, uh, in fact, I was responsible for putting the, the rules for reigning in the Arabian before I left. I went to the con national convention, but the, got the rules accepted. What are the rules? Oh, it took too long. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there is no quick to it. Okay, so, <laughs> so, so, um, and you, you are, as I understand, you are the oldest competing reigning competitor. Yeah, everybody else is smart enough to quit. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I am the oldest one in reigning. And, uh, and I don't know when I'll quit, <laughs> but probably soon. <laughs> well, kind of like. But I won't quit horsing. Kind of like uh, it relates to how it was in the courtroom. You mm -hmm. like to learn and know what that horse is thinking as well, yeah. don't you? Oh, yeah. I, 
I think that to be a good horseman, you gotta, you gotta know what the horse is thinking, and you gotta think of it before he does. How do you do that? How do you develop that? Well, you, you, you're always aware of your surroundings. Uh, like I see a lot of people get hurt, and you think, well, you damn fool, you should have known better. You know what they were doing, and and uh, uh, a lot of experience. You have to, things happen when you weren't looking, mm -hmm. and you. Soon, you're, you're very aware of everything going on around you because horses can spook at almost anything. And if when you're breaking a young one, uh, they, uh, they will spook it about anything. And number one, they, they didn't know they were supposed to carry people around on them. You know, they go back to being a horse again and, uh, and you gotta get their confidence. Uh, before you got a horse that you can count on, you gotta get its confidence and it has to be confident that you won't do anything that's going to get it hurt. Uh, even though it's pretty, maybe slightly dangerous, like a sliding stop on the dirt like we had out there, it could be dangerous. And some of these things, uh, you, uh, you, you gotta, the more you train, the more you've got that horse learning that this is okay. If I ask mm -hmm. you to do it, it's okay. Mm -hmm. Like the first time they gotta go through a big puddle of water, uh, they'll be afraid of it. Uh, and you gotta be, Mm -hmm. patient enough to put them through it. I put them through it a couple of times, pretty soon I spin them right in the water. <laughs> so by the time they've done that, they, they're not afraid of water, <laughs> you know, but that's just little things you do. But, uh, it takes some courage on your part to do that though. Yeah, well, <laughs> that's just fun. All right, so at what point in your reigning competition career did you suddenly decide or did the other happen first, where you wanted to start breeding quarter horses? Well, the only one, yeah, that's a good question. Uh, the, I had a nice mare and... Uh, what was that mare's name? Miss Hollywood Showtime, Miss Hollywood right. Showtime, M -F right. M MRS, uh, Hollywood Showtime. And uh, I couldn't sell her. I had her for sale and nobody seemed to want to buy her. She was probably 10 years old at that time. And I looked around and I thought, well, why am I, you know, she's a good mare, why don't I breed her? It was one of those things. So I took her up and bred her to Great Red Pine. And uh, that was a brilliant move, but it didn't know it. <laughs> I, but I knew I had a really good mare. Talk about Tinseltown. Expand okay. on that. Okay. Uh, we, uh, when, Ima came along, that was my first stud. And uh, I thought, I gotta have a name for that. And I give Charlie credit for that. I said, it's a Hollywood, it's out of Miss Hollywood Showtime. And he says, just right off, well, why don't you call it Tinseltown? <laughs> and that's how it started. And then I started breeding everything with the Tinseltown. And you know, I put Tinseltown in the name of it. And uh, like one was born Easter, I got a yearling out there, and I named it Easter Tinseltown. <laughs> You know, I just, I just put Tetzeltown on the name of it and uh, things like that. But my breeding operation, uh, we've had, I've had some really good mares and Miss Hollywood Showtime had a Miss Tinseltown and I sold it to Tim McQuay and Miss Tinseltown is the leading mare in the world for, for reigning and her foals have brought seven million dollars. One seven million, not brought, not a sale. I mean, they've won that much. Nobody's close. Uh, so that's a line anybody has to be interested in. Mm -hmm. Now, Miss Tinseltown, I don't have anymore, but I got the mother of her. And people in breeding know that. <laughs> mm -hmm. And they know that I've, I go back to real sound good mares. And I, I, my competition, you got, I got a lot of people, multimillionaires that we're going against, It'll have, breed 40 mares a year. A lot of them, 20. I mean, probably 100 out there breeding at least 20 mares a year. And I'm thinking, what's the sense? There aren't 40 good mares in the United States. So, so if everybody's breeding 40, ha, what are you gonna get, <laughs> you know? 2012, you were ranked the 22nd top breeder in the U.S. by Quarter Horse News. Mm -hmm. um, the same year, and you mentioned this, three of your horses finished third, fourth, and fifth mm -hmm. in the finals of the All-American Quarter Horse Reigning 
futurity level. Mm -hmm. And uh, to summarize, through all of this, you've only had five mares, and all Tinseltown horses came from your stable. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, that with two horses to go, with a hundred and some horses at the Quarter Horse Congress, with two horses to go, I had first, second, and third. But, I mean, I owned the horses mm -hmm. uh, that were there. And the one horse ran a score of 131, which is off, almost off the charts to, to get to that high. Mm -hmm. And uh, But then the same guy uh, came in <laughs> and rode another horse and beat me. When I, I let 